In our previous two videos on fashion illustration, we've looked at particular approaches to drawing the figure, which utilize the notion of interconnecting shapes, trying not to think about the figure as a figure, but almost like a jigsaw puzzle. However, there are other successful ways of drawing the figure. And in this session, we're going to look at the idea of gesture drawing. Gesture drawing is referred to in Robert Capellis's book, Experimental Drawing. He suggested the idea that you could draw a figure with a maximum number of five brush marks. How would you describe the whole figure with these limited series of marks? To a certain extent, the size of your drawing is absolutely based on the size of your brush. The maximum size of brush mark that you can achieve should relate to the size of the torso. By changing the pressure on the brush, by changing its direction or pressure applied, you can achieve lighter marks and thinner marks. And these marks will then relate to the size of the limbs. You might need to practice this on scraps of paper first of all, getting a sense of how to draw the figure with these marks. You might want to use ink which has been watered down to produce a mid-tone colour which has some transparency. Or you might mix up acrylic and water that down as well. Either way, you want to have a medium that is fluid it is better to have a big brush which can hold a lot of ink rather than a small brush. That way your one brush mark can get you from the top of the head right down to the bottom of the toe in one single movement. Rather like a conductor, you may need to rehearse your brush mark, not only practicing what marks you can make, but when you stare at the figure, try to rehearse how you would make your five marks. Where would you begin and where would you end? Rather like a piece of Zen calligraphy, which thinks about the beginning and end, but doesn't really worry too much about the journey in between, you are trying to create something which has merely got the essence of the figure, rather than exacting detail. Common mistakes in this kind of drawing is making the figure too long. You can end up with a Giacometti type distortion, which is over exaggerated. Whilst exaggeration and elongation is permissible within fashion illustration, you don't want it to become too extreme. Instead, better really to use exaggeration to heighten an understanding of the pose or the attitude of the model. So, once you've got a sense of how to make those limited number of marks, think about the idea of working into those washes. Certain media will work quite happily into a wash, usually something which itself is water-based. Compressed charcoal works well, so does a graphite stick. Pastel will also work well into a pre-wet area. Traditional charcoal won't work so well. It will struggle to uh, draw through the paper. But compressed charcoal, because of its gum content, works really, really well. In these examples, you'll see that I use a fountain pen, a graphite stick held in a handle, as well as compressed charcoal. Once you have a sense of the essence of the pose, you can continue to apply washes to start to differentiate between the different areas of tone. Again, using wash as a method of creating tone is much more economical than using shading or hatching. Going back to our original partial peak drawing, you can see the way now that the drawing has had applied to it a series of washes. It's not a bad idea to think about starting perhaps a little bit too light. You can always then build up the density of tone on top of that, making areas darker. It's much more difficult to work in the opposite way, 
However, if you do put your wash down and it's not quite in the right place, it's quite easy to lift it off with some kitchen paper. Be experimental. Allow the medium to do what it's going to do. Don't try to overwork the surface too much. This can be detrimental to the paper surface and leaves you with a drawing which seems indecisive. Better to execute a drawing in a very, very few marks with great confidence than something which becomes overworked. Your aspiration is to produce an exciting set of marks as well as an exciting drawing which communicates something of the essence of the collection. In this example, pro markers have been used to construct the drawing. The width of the chisel end is not big enough to capture the whole width of the figure in one go. So you're going to have to make a series of marks, but try not to be too prescriptive with these. Block in big areas of tone and then proceed through your pro markers, working down to darker tones looking at your image and thinking of the image as a series of blocks of tone rather than too much detail and delineation of shape. Of course, as you develop your visual language, you can combine all sorts of methods of drawing, but for the moment, try to keep it simple. 